Ops Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video I have a problem with my air compressor in the workshop and we'll be looking at how you diagnose what the problem is and how to repair it. And some people won't know that there is a hidden switch on the compressor that cuts the motor off when it overheats and if this has switched itself off then the compressor won't work and you may think that the motor's failed. But once you switch the switch it'll come back to life. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. I have a problem with my compressor. I've got the power on. Nothing happens. Uh, what happened initially, there was some compressed air in there. I switched the power on. The motor tried to start then stopped. And since then it's not worked. So I've drained the air out of it to see whether the motor would start but it's dead so the first thing to do is check whether the fuse in the plug has blown I have this screwdriver that has an LED in there and if I touch the end the LED will light up let's see if you can see that so when I'm touching both ends the LED lights up there's the fuse if I touch the one side, hold the screwdriver on there, you can see the light light up. So I know the fuse has a connection, it's not the fuse. So let's go straight into the switch to see if there's anything wrong on that. Now this is the switch unit, a screw in the middle, under the screw. cover off. Let me just check the earth. Yeah, it's, it's earth. You can see the light just comes on. So I know that the earth wire is connected to the earth. Turn this round. The connections are on this side. So the mains in is this one so by touching it's a positive negative so they're connected then they go when the switch operates it presses this down according to the cover it's off when it's down which is there and when it's up it's on so that should be on let's plug it in switch it on nothing so i don't think it's a switch but let me just get my other tester out switch it on ohms so if i short this zero when it's open circuit it will read one side to the other, zero, if I work the switch at zero, if I work the switch it should go back to one, and the switch is working on the negative and the positive, the switch is working. So that switch is sending the electric through to the motor down here. We've got also a, another cable. I can't see what that does. It's some sort of centre for the compressed air. I don't know what this does here. I think that's okay the switch. So I'll put the cover back on. do is concentrate on the motor. I've got a little adapter that goes in there. The uh, socket will fit on the on the end. Put this on slow. I'll 
Chevy Rams. We'll take the plastic cover off on this side. Let's have a look what we've got. Oh, we've got a switch in there. That might be it. 8 amp. That was switched off. Remember this is not plugged in. Here's the plug. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a probe in each of these wires. And saying it's on. That's on now, before it was off. It might have just activated that, that switch, hopefully. So this side, we've got the motor. This end is the compressor and the piston. This is the, the inlet filter, air is sucked in through here, sucked in, then compressed and I think it comes down this pipe, along down this pipe into the tank and this on the end here, on this end is some sort of pressure switch so it looks as if this cut out as operated to, to save the motor. This is the uh, switch that switches off when it overheats. So what's happening now, I'll switch it on, it's trying to go, but there's something wrong. I can turn that round by hand. That's okay. Obviously the motor seems to be okay, so I wonder if the capacitor's um, gone. It's, it's just blown the switch again. That's a thermal protection, I think. So, what else could it be? Capacitor could be. I'll check this valve on the end first. I don't think it's this. <laughs> that works okay. So it's something to do with this. Did have whether some... the valve had stuck. Wasn't letting the air through. Uh, grease and dirt on there, so I'll put that back in. I've just turned it around. This is the pipe that goes to the tank. So now I've switched that switch back on, the cutout switch. Let's plug it in and see if it will run. There we go. So what had happened was Switching it on, somehow the motor got jammed and the cutout switch was activated to stop the power going to the motor to prevent the motor burning out. Um, but in the instructions for this, it doesn't mention the cutout switch at all. So I wonder how many of these have been thrown down the scrap heap. Uh, 
people thinking it's burnt out, it's packed up, go and get a new one. Uh, the oil tank is on the end, just twist it a bit. Here's, here's where the oil's filled. On this end there's a dipstick. Check the oil level, it's okay. This was made in 1997. It's a one and a half horsepower motor and it holds 25 litres of compressed air. That's all the screws back. Let's see if we can get some compression. doesn't seem to want to work. Okay, that's. I think this is the problem, this capacitor. It's um, 30 UF, 450 volts. I've ordered one on eBay. Cost £5.88, including postage. Well, I can't do anything else with that until I get the new capacitor. Um, just a quick point. If you've just tried starting something with the with the capacitor and it doesn't work, do not touch the terminals because this stores uh, high voltage and you could get a shock. What I've done with this one, I've just shorted it out so the voltage in there is very low. Let me see what there is in there. If I um, touch the wire to the No voltage. So that's supposed to hold the charge. I'm hoping it's that. If it's that, we'll be back up and running. But I know that capacitors don't last a long time. The capacitors arrive. That's a new one. 30. 450 volts, 50 cycles, exactly the same as the old one. The only difference I can see is this has got four terminals, this has just got two. Right, time to try it again. That's working. Put the cover back on. Okay, see what pressure it can get up to. working okay now. So I'll put that back in its position and connect the airline to it. 
Well, that's it for today. I hope that was useful, and we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.